Hey Yogi, Sarah here and thanks for joining me for today's Feel Good Flow. In this class, we'll engage the entire body from head to toe and melt away any pent up stress or tension. By the end of the class, we should be left feeling refreshed and uplifted, free from any mental distraction or unnecessary worries. This practice works well at any time of the day and it's suitable for all levels. So if you're ready to feel good, roll out your mat and let's begin. So when you're ready, make your way to a comfortable seat, preferably cross-legged, crossing at the ankles. So once you're there, just very gently rest your hands on your knees and begin to loop your shoulder blades up towards your ears and then just gently drop them down. So you're just feeling the weight of the shoulders drop down your back, softening down. I'm just gonna take three deep breaths here. So maybe close your eyes. I'll bring a soft gaze, maybe looking down towards the ground. As this class is focused on feeling good, I just want to bring our awareness to our breath, to let go and shut off from anything that's happened today, from anything that you might be worried about tomorrow or later on in the week. We're just going to try and completely shut off from that and focus on right now. So gently draw your awareness in. Start by noticing the breath. Notice how it feels. And begin to deepen the inhale by sending the breath down towards the lower part of the belly. And very softly and gently begin to exhale fully, allowing the breath to leave the body. And once again, inhale fully down towards the bottom of the belly and exhale, letting go. And you blink your eyes back open. If they were closed, bring yourself back into the room. It's so gonna begin with some very gentle, nice feeling neck rolls. So begin to drop your right ear to the right shoulder and maybe begin to bring your right fingertips down towards the mat. This might feel like quite enough already for you. If you want to take it even deeper, you can bring your left fingertips down towards the mat. You'll feel a really deep opening here. So again, that might be too deep and you might want to just work to the opposite side. So just maybe feel around both, see what feels good for you. So drop a right ear to right shoulder and then gently begin to tilt the head down towards the ground. So you're looking down towards your feet and you're feeling a nice stretch, a nice release through the back of the neck. Inhale. Gently bring the head back up so the ear rests down towards the shoulder. And then gently drop back down. So begin to move very slowly, just dropping the head forward and back. Notice if you feel any knots, any tension. You might hear little creaks, little cracks. If you do, send the breath to those areas. Breathing more oxygen in to the knots. And release and soften on the exhale. Last one, drop the head forward. Lovely. Bring the head back to center. As gently as you can, begin to tilt the head back up to center. Just take a moment to notice how either side feels. Notice if the left side of the neck feels a little bit more open than the right side. So once you're ready, moving into the next side, drop the left ear down towards the left shoulder. Maybe like we did in the opposite side, you want to extend the fingertips away from the body down towards the mat. When you're ready, begin to tilt the head forward. And then tilting back, moving with your own pace. Do try and keep it nice and slow. Don't rush these poses. We're trying to feel good in our body. So enjoy each movement. Enjoy the sensations. As you massage out every little bit of tension through the whole body. 
lovely. Gently come back to center. Great. You should be feeling a little bit more awake in the shoulders, up towards the neck. We're going to bring our fingertips like claws and rest them onto the shoulders. Bring your elbows out nice and wide. Just begin to really open through the chest. You feel a nice broad opening through the heart space. We're going to begin to draw large circles with the elbows towards the front. Begin to feel through any creaks, any movements, any knots to the shoulders, to the back of the upper body. Feeling those sensations. Now it's beginning to listen and tune in what's going on inside the body. Maybe beginning to draw larger circles, trying to keep the movement nice and soft, nice and steady. So we're not flowing through too quickly or rushing into it. We're really feeling each movement, feeling each sensation. And then begin to reverse in the opposite direction, we're beginning to work a little bit differently. So we're feeling into the chest. So you might notice this feels a little bit differently. The body maybe is beginning to creak as it opens up, warms up. Gently massaging out those knots. That tension that we tend to hold on to quite a lot in our upper body. And the last one, wherever you are. And gently release, just soften down, take a moment. Just gently maybe shake it out if you need to. I'm gonna make our way over into tabletop, over to hands and knees. Take your time getting there. No rush at all, today is all about feeling good. We're not in a rush. We're not trying to go deeper than we need to. Don't want to strain ourselves or do anything that's going to cause us damage. We're just trying to feel good and open and release through the body. So make sure that your wrists are in line under your shoulders and your knees are in line under the hips. We're going to flow through some cat cows from here. So as you inhale, drop the belly, loop the shoulder blades back so you're lifting the tailbone high as we open through to cow pose. Then as you exhale, you begin to round through the spine, draw the belly in, draw up the gaze. So the head drops down. You're looking towards your knees. You're peeling your spine up into a position like an angry cat. Inhale, flow back through to cow. Open forward. And exhale, flow back into cat pose. Once again, inhale and exhale. Anytime you think you have it, if you want to close the eyes, absolutely do. Beginning to flow with your own breath. Really noticing how the lower back feels. As we were gently beginning to massage the lower back, massaging out the spine, bringing nice gentle movements. Now either stay with your normal cat cow or to take a little bit different. You can flip the palms so the fingertips begin to face towards the knees. This is such a lovely pose. I love to do this just to really release out the joints, releasing out the wrists. So the fingertips facing towards the knees. Keep a soft, el soft bend in your elbow. Just so we're not locking our joints out and we're not sitting onto the bones. You want to keep a little bit of a soft bend there. And just begin to flow through your cat cows as you were before. Only moving into this pose if you feel you want to work deep into the wrists. If you're here with me, you'll notice just straight away. I love this feeling for the wrists. It can be so nice. Maybe if you spend a lot of time at a computer, maybe a lot of time cooking or baking. It can be really nice just to stretch out the wrists. Should you even feel this up towards the forearms? The last breath. And gently come back to your center and I just sit down towards your heels. Shake out the wrists. Just give them a break just before we move into the next pose. Lovely. So once you're back through, come back up into tabletop. We're going to flow back to our cat cow. We're going to bring a bit of a child's pose into it. So inhale, open up, true to cow. 
Exhale, flowing back, due to cat. And then begin to send the hips back towards your heels as if you're coming into child's pose. Maybe your forehead rests towards the mat. Maybe your hips rest onto your heels. Not to worry if neither do. Just set that intention so the head comes down towards the mat and the hips are even hanging back towards the heels. Keep the forearms away from the mat so we're not resting down, keeping this a little bit active. Inhale, flow back up. Open up, shoot a cow. Exhale, back into cat. Send the hips towards the heels. So we're beginning to bring more movement through the body, into the shoulders, into the hips. Inhale, back up to tabletop. Open up, true to cow. And exhale, into cat pose. Hips back towards the heels, into child's pose. Inhale, flying back through, up into tabletop. Inhaling, opening up into cow. Exhale, around the spine, and begin to send the hips back. Lovely, last round. Inhale, flow back up to your tabletop. Open tree to cow. Feel every movement. Exhale, around the spine, drop the gaze. And send the hips towards the heels. Lovely. Maybe rest down in your child's pose just for a moment to allow the forearms to drop. Maybe if you want to take the weight off the wrists, we've done a little bit of work here. You can always flip the palms to face the ceiling or draw the arms along the body. It's going to be here for two breaths. Just completely relax. Feel the body as it begins to wake up and warm up and release and how it feels. Inhale, press yourself back up to center, back up to your tabletop. Gonna make your way into downward facing dog. Don't worry, we're not gonna be working too deeply. We're just gonna release the body. So walk the hands slightly more forward. So you want your index finger pointing towards the short edge of the mat. So your fingertips aren't facing straight in front of you. There's a slight bend. This will just give you that internal rotation of the shoulders. Tuck the toes under. We're gonna to begin to hover the knees off the mat and then send the hips towards the back of the room. And like me, if this is your first down dog of the day, you might feel the hips are a little bit tight or the backs of the legs are really tight and the heels don't go anywhere near the mat. It's totally fine. Keep a deep bend in the knees. Support the lower back. So you wanna really ground both hand evenly, keeping the ears away from the shoulders and we're pressing the hips towards the back of the room and our knees are as deeply bent as we comfortably need. From here, we're going to begin to really come up onto our tippy toes. We're simply just stretching out the toes and then drop the heels down towards the mat. So we're beginning to stretch through the backs, the legs, opening up the calves, the hamstrings. Inhale, coming back up onto the toes. Keep the knees bent if you need to. And exhale, drop the heels down towards the mat. Inhale, back up high onto the tippy toes. Drop the heels. Last one, high up onto the toes. Lovely, and drop the heels. Great, stretch out. Maybe pedal to both feet, drop the knees. Whatever you need to hear just to take a break. Now, once you're ready, we're going to make our way to a forward fold. Bring your right foot into the middle of the mat. Keeping both hands planted, bring the left foot directly in front of the right. Then the right foot in front of the left. The left foot in front of the right, just until you feel you can't go any deeper. Bring the feet hip width distance apart. And just allow the upper body to hang heavy. Drape the arms over the body. Keeping as deep of a bend in the knees as you need to. So we're supporting our lower back. We're allowing the upper body just to fall and melt. So there's no weight at all in the neck and the head. There's no tension through the arms, the shoulders. 
Maybe stay here on a rock side to side. Or take hold of opposite elbow. And just rocking side to side on the hips so the legs stay as they are. But we're rocking the upper body side to side. And lovely, gently release the arms and just allow them to be completely heavy. When you're ready, bend into the knees as much as you need to plant both hands back onto the mat. We're going to step ourselves back into our downward facing dog. So you can drop down onto the knees if you need to and make your way back into down dog. Or step the right foot and then the left. Back into down dog. Shake out the hips if you need. Pedal out the legs. Great, and then when you're ready, drop down onto the mat into tabletop. Lovely, from here we're going to make our way into a low lunge. So take a moment, set yourself up once again, knees in line under your hips, wrists in line under the shoulders. Actually going to begin by extending through the right leg. So extend the right leg out towards the wall behind you and just try and keep the hips nice and level so when the leg is not too high or it's not dropping down too low you're trying to keep the hips level you can always bring your hand just under the pelvis just to feel the hips to see if they're still holding and strong and nice and level it's going to flex that foot so you're pressing into the right heel you should feel that begin to engage straight away lovely then begin to bend into the right knee and we're going to begin to work into that hip into the joint Begin to draw circles with the right knee. Start out nice and small. And then once you feel you have that mobility, begin to draw larger circles. So just feeling out the hip joint, that socket, moving to our own space, to what feels good in the body. Finding some movement. Then reverse to the opposite side. It's not much of a movement, you won't feel like you're doing too much. It's such a lovely pose, you feel great after. And then after the next one, just drop the right knee down towards the mat and just take a moment to feel both hips. Notice how the right feels from the left, so you should feel a little bit more open and released. Now, if your wrists from here, because we've done quite a lot of work, if they feel like it's just too much, you could always come up onto the fists. Absolutely feel free. It's not your average pose, but it's, it can protect the joints and it can really support you. So absolutely feel free if you need to. Work through to the left side. Stand the left leg long. Flex the foot. Engage. Feel the muscles beginning to work. Feel the body warming up, waking up. Then bend into the knee. And begin to draw the circles with that knee. This side might feel completely different. If it does, that's okay. Just notice where the body's at. Finding your own mobility, your own space. What works for you today, each day, will be different. Each side of the body will be different and each body will be different. So always just know to work with your own body reverse on the opposite side. Don't worry what anybody else can do or where you think you should be. Once you tune in with your body, it will tell you where you are and where you need to be. Don't rush it. The last two. And then gently release, lovely. We'll take a break from here, just for three breaths. So bring the big toes to touch, send the hips towards the heels. Get a lovely stretch to the shoulders, walk the hands nice and forward. Drop the forehead towards the mat. The hips are resting maybe onto the heels or down towards the heels. And just take three deep breaths. Inhale, bring back up to tabletop. 
making your way from here into Sphinx Pose. So we're coming down onto our bellies. You might need to walk your legs back as you gently lower down onto the forearms and soften the legs down onto the mat. So just take a moment here just to notice how the lower back feels. Extend the legs long, untuck the toes. Staying high up on the forearms, you're roughly, once your elbows in line under your shoulders and roughly shoulder width distance apart. If this feels a little bit too tense in the lower back, you could walk the legs a little bit further away from the body on the mat, a little bit wider, or you can walk the arms further away from the body. Those different variations just to suit different types of bodies. So from wherever you are in the pose, begin to loop the shoulder blades back, open through the chest, open forward. This is an active sphinx pose. If we're not collapsing and relaxing down, but we're opening and lengthening. So lengthen through the crown of the head, open through the chest, tilt the pelvis under slightly. Lovely pose, lengthening through the spine. So you open through the chest, pressing down into the forearms. Keeping the shoulders away from the ears. Let's stay here for another breath. And then we'll gently release by placing one hand on top of the next. Bring the elbows nice and wide as you rest the forehead down. Make a little pillow out of your hands, resting the head down. Just shake the hips left to right, bring a little bit of movement into the hips. And once you're ready, we're going to press ourselves back up into tabletop. And from here, we're going to bring our right foot up towards the top of the mat. It's coming up into a low lunge. So the right foot is in between both hands. And bring, just draw the left leg back a little bit further on the mat. There's more space between the hips. Come up high onto the fingertips as you begin to lengthen through the spine. Loop the shoulder blades back away from the ears. Open forward. Make sure your front leg, so your knee is in line over your ankle. And you're grinding through both feet evenly. The shoulder blades are running back, the energy shooting out through the crown of your head. Stay for a breath. And then as we exhale, we're going to begin to shift the hips back and open up into our half splits. So the toes are peeling back towards your face. Feeling a lovely stretch through the back of the leg. Now we're not worried about draping too far over the leg. Just trying to keep a long spine here. And then inhale, flowing back to low lunge. Exhale, back into half splits. Inhale, back to the low lunge. Open through the chest. Exhale. Heel the toes back, send the hips back. Inhale, flow forward, open up. Exhale, back. Two more. Inhale, flow forward, opening up. Exhale, coming back. And last one, inhale, flow forward. Plant both hands, step the right leg towards the left. Take a moment once again, feel either side. Great, I'm gonna move to the next side. So bring your left foot, however you can get it there, up towards the top of the mat, in line underneath the knee. Shift the hips back if you need to, walk the right leg towards the back of the mat make more space for the body. So open through the chest, lengthen through the crown of the head, lengthen the spine. Deep inhale and exhale. Shift the hips back, peel the toes back. So the more you peel the toes back, the more a stretch you should feel down that left leg. Lovely. Inhale, coming forward, lengthen the spine. Sink the hips. Send the hips now towards the back of the mat. Peel the toes. Inhale. Low lunge. 
Hips draw down and forward. Exhale, heel the toes back. Once again, inhale, come forward. Exhale, hips go back towards the back of the mat. Toes point, last one. Inhale, forward. And exhale, coming back, feel the toes. Really deep stretch here, lovely. Inhale, forward, plant both hands. Step the left leg towards the back of the mat, back to our tabletop. Great, and from here, we're gonna cross over both ankles, or however you can get there, we're gonna make our way over to sitting onto the mat. And then once you're there, plant both, fa both feet onto the mat, sit nice and tall, roll the shoulder blades back. Holding onto the knees, lengthen through the spine. Just take a moment. And begin to hug underneath both knees. Walk the feet, maybe a little bit closer into the body. From here, begin to extend the right foot away from the body. Just very gently, softly as you can, begin to circle through the foot, circling through the ankle. Just beginning to bring some really nice movements into the ankle. Even though we might feel like all we're working on is our foot, we're not. We're lengthening through the spine. We're opening the shoulders, sitting high up on our sitting bones. Sometimes these poses might feel like we're not doing too much, but we are, every part of the body is working. And reversing to the opposite side. Such a lovely pose. It's rolling through the joint, bringing some movement, some mobility into the body. But we also strengthen our calf, Keep lengthening through the spine. Gently drop the right foot down onto the mat. Great. Bring the right leg away from the mat. Point the toes forward. Hold for a sec. And then begin to circle towards one side. So it doesn't matter which side you work on first. We'll be going through both. Keep lengthening through the spine. Hugging those legs. Noticing any creaks in the joints, feeling through any sensations to the feet. Reverse towards the opposite side. Do three more circles. And then once you're ready, release the left foot back down. Make our way down to lying on the mat. Gently as you can, wherever you can get there. Maybe come down onto the elbows first. Rest yourself down and hug your knees in towards the belly. Giving them a quick squeeze into the belly. Maybe you'll rock side to side, massaging out the hips and the lower back. From here, we're gonna plant both feet down onto the mat, where we're gonna work and make our way into bridge pose. You take a moment to make sure that your shoulder blades are nestled under the body so we're not sitting up too high. The shoulders are relaxed and down away from the ears. Bring the heels towards the body so you can almost graze the heels with your hands. You want the knees in line over the ankles so they're about hip width distance apart. Lovely, once you're here, we're gonna to begin to very gently begin to tilt the pelvis forward and back. So maybe rest your hands onto the belly. So you can really feel this movement because it doesn't look like much, but it does feel lovely for the lower back. It's a great release. So as you inhale, begin to tilt the pelvis forward. So the lower back begins to peel away from the mat. As I say, it'll only feel so slight, but you should be able to slide your hand under the lower back. And then as you exhale, begin to tilt the pelvis back. So the lower back flattens on the mat. So now you can't put your hand under there. Inhale, tilt the pelvis forward. And exhale, tilt the pelvis back. Inhale forward. Exhale back. Once again, inhale forward. Exhale, tilting back. Inhale forward. And this time, as you exhale back, 
So flatten the spine on the mat. I'm going to release the hands down so the palms are facing down towards the ground. Begin to lift the hips, the sitting bones away from the mat. So they're coming up high. You should feel like you're beginning to engage the glutes, engage the muscles in the bum. And the pelvis is still tilting back, so we're not dropping down, we're still tilting it back so our core begins to engage. And we're sending the weight of the body through the knees, so you're pressing into the knees. So the energy is shooting down through the body. Ground your both feet evenly. Maybe begin to try and see if you can send the hips a little bit higher. So we're going to begin to flow in and out of bridge pose. we are using the same motion as we did. So gently begin to lower down, vertebrae by vertebrae. So the spine fully flattens onto the mat. Inhale, tilt forward. Exhale, pelvis tilts back. Hips lift away from the mat. Coming up into bridge. Gently lower. Tilting forward and tilting back. Now we're gonna begin to bring the arms in. So gently lower the hips towards the mat. And this time, as we begin to lift the hips, we're gonna bring the arms up and overhead. And then as we drop down, we're gonna bring the arms back down towards the body. If it feels a little bit too challenging, you can always stay with just with this bridge pose. Also wonderful, wherever you want to be. So if you need to walk a little bit further down the mat, absolutely do. So inhale, bring the hips off the mat. Bring the arms up and overhead. Exhale, everything lowers down. Once again, bring the hips and the arms up. And then lower down on the exhale. Once again, inhale, reaching up. Exhale, lower. Great, last one. This time we're gonna stay up with the arms, with the fingertips pointing towards the sky and the hips high up. So inhale, reach up. Hips are high, fingertips are long, facing towards the ceiling. Palms are facing each other. Drop the shoulder blades. So we're not squeezing up, but drop them down. Great. Start pressing to both feet. Our glutes are engaged. You might feel the tops of the legs beginning to really heat up and warm up. Brilliant if you do. Then exhale, drop it all back down. Fingertips come down towards the mat. Lovely, hug the knees in. Give them a big embrace. Maybe rock side to side. That's to lengthen through the spine. Lengthen out the muscles and the glutes. And then you can plant both feet back onto the mat. It's going to work into a brief recline pigeon pose. So draw the left knee in towards the belly. We're going to pivot at the knee, hinge at the knee, and plant the left ankle towards the right knee. Begin to draw the right foot away from the mat and interlace the fingers behind that right leg. Now, if this is too challenging, you can always just stay here and work on opening the hips. If you want to go deeper, take hold of the back of the right leg and draw the legs in towards the belly. You can use your elbow as a gauge to press and open deeper into the left leg. So just stretching out the muscles. That's to make sure that we're not holding any tension, we're not holding on to anything from our class. And just gently release, unwind. Just take a breath and then begin to hug the right knee in towards the belly, hinge up the right knee, plant the right ankle onto the knee, interlace the fingers, maybe if you want to, behind the left leg and draw the legs towards the body. Breathing into the opening. So we're finding more length in the inhale. The exhale, we see if you can sink a little bit deeper. You can maybe find more space and go deeper. And then gently release the legs back down to the mat. Unwind down. Make your way from here 
into a well-deserved Shavasana. Extend the legs long, extend the arms long. And just take the next few seconds to completely let go. I encourage you always to stay as long as you can in your Shavasana. Let's take the next few seconds to let go of the shoulders, soften to the chest, and allow the hips to become heavy, the legs, the arms, and the weightless. You drop any awareness. And thank you very much for joining me for today's class. Namaste.